In this second video, examining the use of integration by parts, we will demonstrate how we use the technique to solve a definite integral. For basic information about the integration by parts technique, make sure you see the first video. Suppose we're asked to find the area bounded by the curve y equals the inverse sine of x and the x-axis on the interval from 0 to 1 half. Here we see a graph of the curve y equals the inverse sine of x, and we see the interval from 0 to 1 half, so we're interested in the area that's shown here in green. Recall that the area under a curve can be found using a definite integral, so we'll take the integral from 0 to 1 half of the inverse sine of x dx. Now, this is not one of the basic uh, forms of integrals that we know, so we are going to try using integration by parts. And recall, we need to make a selection for u and the rest of it becomes dv, or we make a selection for dv and the rest of it becomes u. Now in this case, since the inverse sine of x is not one of our basic forms, this is not something that we know how to integrate. So as you recall from the tip from our first video, if there's something that we can't integrate, we'll let that be u, and then the rest of it becomes dv. So as you will see in the next slide, if we let u equal the inverse, inverse sine of x, dv is equal to dx. If we take the derivative, of the inverse sine of x, we'll get 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, so du is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. dv is equal to dx, so v will simply be the integral of dx, or being the simplest antiderivative, v is equal to x. Now, as you recall, integration by parts has the formula that if we integrate u dv, we get u times v minus the integral of v du. So we want to know what happens when we evaluate a definite integral using integration by parts. Well, nicely enough, it's simply evaluating each part on the with the bounds of a to b. So evaluate the definite integral from a to b of u dv as u times v evaluated from a to b minus the integral from a to b of v du. So we'll deposit the pieces, and we get the integral from 0 to 1 half of the inverse sine of x dx is equal to the inverse sine of x times x evaluated from 0 to 1 half minus the integral from 0 to 1 half of x divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Recall from the first video that we want to ask, did we make an improvement? And we sure did. If I let if I want to make a substitution and let my uh, u, although we won't use u in this case because we've already used it, if we let my w be 1 minus x squared, the derivative of w will be a negative 2x dx. And I see a multiple of negative 2x dx in that numerator. So again, letting w equal 1 minus x squared, dw dx is negative 2x, so 1 half dw is equal to a negative x dx. So making the substitution, I get that the left, that integral on the left hand side is equal to x times the inverse sine of x evaluated from 0 to 1 half, plus 1 half times the integral from 1 to 3 fourths of 1 over w to the 1 half power dw. Now how did we change the bounds? Well, if x is equal to 0, w is equal to 1 minus 0, which is where we get the 1. If x is equal to 1 half, w is equal to 1 minus 1 half squared, which is how we get the 3 fourths. We can finish out that integral on the right hand side, and then we evaluate, and when we do, we get the area under the curve, y equals the inverse sine of x on the interval from 0 to 1 half, is pi over 12 plus the square root of 3 fourths minus 1. So let's summarize some of the key ideas. As we said before, integration by parts is a useful technique for simplifying integrals. Please practice and know this technique. Integration by parts can be used repeatedly until you arrive at a form that meets one of the basic integrals you know. Make sure to watch for the plus and minus signs and make careful use of parentheses as you complete the technique. When you apply integration by parts, if you have a function that cannot be integrated, 
such as we did in this case with the inverse sine of x, is possible to let dv be dx, and the rest of the integrand becomes u. And finally, when evaluating a definite integral using integration by parts, make sure you evaluate both parts of the right side of the equation at the upper and lower limits of the integral.